Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our President, Bobby O'Connor, I'm delighted to welcome you all here to Templeville Road. I extend a particularly warm welcome to Brendan Wilkins, President of Buccaneers, his officers, supporters and players. You're all very welcome. I'll quickly run through the two teams with you now. Starting with the home side, Connor Hayes at full back, number 15, Leandro Ramirez, number 14, Mark Fogarty, 13, Michael O'Gara, 12, Daniel Sansbury, number 11. The halfbacks, Connor Dean, number 10, Adam McAvoy, number 9. Up front, we have number 1, Jack Reedy Walsh, number 2, Jamie Harding, number 3, Mick McCormick. In the second row, Daniel Lean, whereas number four, Liam Corcoran, number five. Number six is Ben Taylor, Ethan Baxter, number seven, and the captain, Ronan Waters, wears number eight. For the visitors, Conor O'Shaughnessy is at full back. Number 14, Harry Bolstiger. Number 13, Daniel Hawkshaw. Number 12, Mark Earl. Number 11, Ross Murphy Sweeney. Number 10 is Stephen Mannion, and the captain wears number 9 shirt, Frank Hopkins. Up front, number 1, James Kelly, number 2, Matthew Victory, and number 3, Sean O'Connell. In the second row, number 4, Ferguson Galvin, number 5, Kean McCann. Number 6, Luke Bolster, number 7, Carl Walsh, and number 8, Daniel Qualter. Our match officials this afternoon charged with keeping law and order. Our referee is Chris Lowe, and he's assisted by Dermot Blake and Joe Dixon. And the various under 12s are forming a guard of honour. Give them a shout out there. Let's have it for the number 12. They're going to treat us to an exhibition match at half time. The Mary's under 12s, the future of the club. So we look forward to seeing you guys at half time, okay? Uh, well, you've heard the welcome there to um, St. Mary's College Rugby Football Club here in um, Templeville Road. Uh, the, 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 the teams have been called out, so there's no point in me calling out the names. I think you heard, so I heard them all clearly. So basically, this is the first round of the IL Division 1B uh, against St. Mary's and uh, Buccaneers. Uh, last year, um, Bucks played probably one of their best games ever and uh, came away with a win. And uh, when uh, St. Mary's came and visited us, uh, we did likewise. Uh, on this occasion, however, it might be slightly different, uh, totally different teams. Uh, we've lost a number of players, including our captain there, uh, uh, Martin Staunton. And uh, we just have to see how the start of the season goes. So listen, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it's now, what is it, two minutes to go. And uh, uh, I'll give you uh, running commentary, uh, but only limited, if you don't mind. I'm doing commentary, uh, or I'm doing videoing and streaming together.
Stevie Dare is giving uh, Buccaneers a penalty advantage at the moment. St. Mary's player there, uh, offside. offside, giving uh, Buccaneers a penalty on the halfway line. of the game and we'll be interested to see how both packs match up. Straight away the referee penalising a uh, Buccaneers player there for bringing down the scrum. <laughs> Inch perfect kick here down to touch. They're insisting that both teams play a meter apart. there of a sweet there uh, try out the wing by St Mary's number 11 Dan Daniel uh, Sensory
Elizabeth, five minutes. A try by number 11, Daniel Scansory. St. Mary's, five. Buccaneers, nil. Advantage there to St. Mary's for a high tackle. out there on the full so players go back there or play goes back there to where the ball was kicked inside the St. Mary's half of the pitch Commence there on the St. Mary's um, 10 metre line, and the referee there reminding the Buccaneers front row to keep their scrum up, otherwise, they'll be penalised again. Penalty there against St. Mary's there for a deliberate knock on. And uh, second scrum then went much, much better there for Buccaneers. Uh, ball never went into touch there, so the play continues. Come on, 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 come on,
Forty there, ball not forward there by Buccaneers. Pretty nicely phase they play there together. Uh, both teams are look like as if they're playing a bit nervously. Uh, either way, it gives uh, St Mary's a foot into the scrum, just side their own 22. Big battle here between Buccaneers tight head, Sean O'Connell, <coughs> and the St. Mary's loose head. Pressure there by Frankie Hopkins there on the um, St. Mary's scrum half. The ball was out. Pressurizing the scrum half to knock the ball forward, giving Buccaneers a scrum in front of the St. Mary's goals. Now that looked forward all day long, unfortunately, I don't think. And there's advantage going to St. Mary's there for high tackle. Advantage is over. Referee is called. Yeah. Unfortunately, from this position there that we looked at going to score in front of uh, St. Mary's goals, we're now having to defend a uh, line out on our own uh, five metre line. created the um, scrum opportunity there in front of St. Mary's uh, holds. Unfortunately, his uh, drop ball there at the back of the scrum has ended up with Bucks now back on the road five metres. No doubt there'll be a rolling ball here very soon. And the referee they are quite emphatic that the ball was down. Here. Guys. On 60 
15 minutes, a try by James Harding, converted by Mick O'Gara, St. Mary's 12, Buccaneers nil. that Mary's knocked the ball forward and there was also a uh, offside so Bentley uh, going to Buccaneers Buccaneers working with advantage there. St. Mary's player there, number 10, uh, with a high tackle. And this gives uh, Buccaneers the chance of kicking for a penalty just outside uh, St. Mary's 22 metres.
and you can see there from the replay another superb try out the wing there by uh, uh, St Mary's uh, 11 Daniel Sansory by Donald Scansbury, converted by Michael O'Gara, St. Mary's 19, Buccaneers 3. That's unfortunate there. Um, ref could see there. Frankie there trying to get on side there to take a quick penalty. But uh, see we didn't take it from exactly the right place. Um, the uh, referee was screaming his head off there. Explained there that the uh, St. Mary's player was offside in a clearing kick. Uh, he couldn't actually show it loud enough. Uh, and the player obviously didn't listen. So that gives the uh, possession back to Buccaneers. <laughs> and uh, you probably noticed there that uh, Troyan was uh, well off giving a scrum to St. Mary's. Just outside the own 22. St. Mary's there going very close to scoring on the left corner once again. Uh, before they could do so, the ball was not forward. <laughs> Referee there is blowing the whistle there. So just so, so hot the clock. Thank <laughs> you. 
A penalty there against St Mary's there for a seat belt, well not say seat belt tackle, um, tackle went up height up to the neck, so just a simple penalty. Referee there had already called advantage. Uh, St. Mary's player coming from the side. So play goes back to where the um, offence occurred. Allowing Buccaneers there to uh, kick the ball into uh, St. Mary's half of the field. Well, as we can see, not quite into St. Mary's half of the field. So once again St Mary's there have been penalised for a high tackle and on this occasion the referee is having a chat with the captain of the St Mary's team. Basically if St Mary's don't change the behaviour um, he will have to give out the yellow card. And unfortunately once again um, Bucks aren't allowed to take the quick tap and go. Ball didn't seem to be going to touch. But according to the uh, touch judge, the ball did go into touch. So referee was telling the players to play. Touch judge says otherwise. And we go back to a line out inside in St. Mary's half, uh, St. Mary's 22. So number seven there, St. Mary was off his feet. The uh, referee was making it crystal clear off the feet. He obviously persisted in playing. And the yellow card there is for a high tackle. So one would have thought there with a numerical advantage, Buccaneers might um, go for a touch, go to touch or go for a scrum. But they're electing to get the points there. <coughs>
33 minutes, the penalty by Stephen Mannion, St. Mary's 19, Buccaneers 6. So penalty going on this occasion against Buccaneers there for not releasing in the tackle. They're kicked out in the full, giving the put into the scrum to the Buccaneers. your tackle or try you will never see no one there protecting the rock no pillars rookie uh, mistake the Buccaneers concede yes another try There, that guy looked. Uh, Thirty-seven minutes to try by Roman Waters, converted by Mick O'Gara. St Mary's twenty-six, Buccaneers six.
penalty there against St Mary's there for Dummy throwing the line out giving uh, Buccaneers they are put into the scrum obviously they're looking at their numerical advantage Tackle there against St. Mary's. Frankie Hopkins there having a chat with the referee explaining there that St. Mary's are continuing with the high tackles. Obviously looking for another man to be removed. Either way, Buccaneers kick the ball to touch just outside St. Mary's 10 metres. And with the clock there, looking at 40 minutes. They will be hoping there to get a try. They're not going to do with one-off runners. And McCann there, to the relief of the Buccaneers player. Scores a try. Very weak defence there by St Mary's. <laughs> and with that, the referee blows the whistle for half time. Stroke of half time. Try by Keen McCann. Buccaneers converted by their number 10, St. Mary's 26, Buccaneers 13. So uh, just letting you know there that um, if any company out there would like to advertise their brand, uh, there's uh, advertising there to be made available there while we stream our games and your banner or your company can be displayed on top of the screen. And if any information you'd like us to relay to the public, uh, if you uh, let us know, that can be done also. So if you contact there, Geraldine, uh, the Secretary of Buccaneers, or any of the officers, um, we would be able to uh, put your name up at the top of each game that we stream away and uh, broadcast you to the nation. So with that, I'm just going to go to uh, some of our uh, older sponsors. Michael Moore Car Sales Limited, Athlone and Port Tarlington are premium car and commercial vehicle dealerships supplying new and used Mercedes-Benz, Audi, Volkswagen and Skoda models across Ireland from their dealerships in Athlone County Westmead and Port Tarlington County Leash. So whether you are looking for a brand new Mercedes-Benz, a high-performance Audi, a newly new Volkswagen car or van, or an approved used Skoda or any premium new or used car, they are there to help you and get you the car of your dreams. The Bounty Bar. The varied menu based on Irish cuisine is what you're offered at this establishment. The Bounty is famous for its great service and friendly staff who are always ready to help you. 
The bounty is also a great place for functions of all sizes. You will love the prices and come back for the service. Well done to Tom, Pascal and their dedicated staff. Bridge Transition Bridge Transition is a professional services company providing advisory and implementation support to large enterprises. Founded by Joe Brown, it works with large corporations on business, transformation, strategy, restructuring and turnaround. Thanks also to Joe Brown who has been kit sponsors for our seniors and many of our underage teams in recent years. Carthy Meets Carthy Meats is a story that began almost three quarters of a century ago. At the family home in Arcadia, Athlone, Oliver Carthy cooked, dressed, weighed and wrapped his first ham and the Carthy way was born. Now and as then, it's a way of doing things not only that embraces time-honoured traditions and an unmistakable sense of Irishness, it also puts innovation, imagination and a passion for quality at the heart of everything they do. Collins Boyd. Collins Boyd are chartered civil and structural engineers and registered architects. They pride themselves with the quality of work and are therefore the right choice for your project, no matter what the size. Check out their website to see examples of their projects or learn more about them at collinsboydeng.com. Also, check out some of the services they provide at Collins Boyd Engineering. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact them. Based in Roscommon, they operate everywhere in Ireland with the highest quality service you'll find, guaranteed. Dubarry of Ireland. In 1937, in the heart of Ireland's west coast, a cooperative company was established to create employment in a small town called Ballinasloe. A joint venture between the local Chamber of Commerce and a family from Northampton the home of English footwear production, seeking a continental European flavour to set them aside from similar Irish brands, the company was named after the beautiful French courtesan and mistress of Louis XV, Madame du Barry, and du Barry of Ireland was formed. Ganley's of Athlone At the forefront of Irish building and hardware supplies since 1989, the Ganley story began in 1989 with four employees when the founder, Michael Ganley, established a builder's providers and hardware business in a disused garage in Athlone. Since then, they have grown to 120 staff across destinations, showrooms and stores in Athlone, Longford and Mount Bellew. Today, they offer the largest range of building supplies and products to cover both builders and home improvement projects across the Midlands. With 30 years of experience in DIY and building materials, they are there to help you with all your interior design and home renovation projects. Hudson Bay Hotel Hudson Bay Hotel is a luxurious four-star hotel located just a short drive from the heart of Athlone, nestled on the shores of Loch Ree. With sweeping views across the lake and surrounding countryside, Guests can enjoy the hotel's picturesque setting while also being close to some of the most popular activities and attractions in Ireland. And welcome back here to the second half of um, our game there between St Mary's and Buccaneers in, uh, in Temple Road. And uh, just looking at a replay of the last try there by Buccaneers. Ball kicked out in the full there, so play goes back to where the ball was kicked.
Very unfortunate uh, knock on there. Uh, by uh, I think it's Harry Balsinger. Uh, would it be nice there to score a try there at the start of the half? But unfortunately, the hop of the ball didn't go his way. Once again, Buccaneers are struggling there a bit with the scrum. Giving the penalty to St. Mary's. Plenty advantage there for uh, Buccaneers there. St Mary's player now rolling away. Which will be a relief to Bucks because the ball just seemed to be going over and back. Bucks find it very difficult to breach the uh, St Mary's defence. And that'll give them a kick to touch from their own or from the centre of the field.
So, uh, as I said earlier, there any company there would like to advertise their, um, their advertise themselves on our Buccaneers stream. Um, just contact Geraldine anytime. Give her your details, and I'm sure we can work out a deal. Beautiful kick to touch there. Stephen Mannion. Putting the ball there between the 5 and 22 meter line. Once again, when it looks as if Bucks are making some kind of progress, um, luck does not seem to be on their side. So knock on there by Bucks, gets possession there back to St. Mary's. I think it was by number 17 Niall McIniff on the St Mary's side number 20 Oren Burgess uh, replaces Luke Balsinger on the Buccaneer side Thank you. 
been offside there. I think the St. Mary's player made a bad decision there. He had his foot out of bounds, touched the ball down. So deliberately taking the ball out of play. Gone down by Buccaneers, gives play possession there back to St. Mary's. And if that was a knock on, there was two knock ons. Unfortunate day. Our game has been very clean up to now. Been very honest. I know doubt there. The referee with the uh, touch judges there will probably send off a couple of players, one from each side, for a 10-minute break.
each one player from each team will be taking a little siesta Excuse me, it looks as if um, Kim McCann has been red carded for high tackle. So I'm not too sure if the two red cars are one yellow and one red. Seemingly there that the semi came through the middle, so which means the mall went grand, but somehow a tackle went high. So another penalty there for a high tackle. So it appeared there that the referees had been um, coached into um, policing the high tackle very, very severely. And once, a thing, once again, things don't seem to be going Buccaneers' way. Knock on there in the mall. I suppose we have to remember there that it's uh, quite early in the season. Um, while uh, Buccaneers were challenged in the league final against uh, Sligo. They haven't been really challenged there in the last two games there uh, against Ballina and I think uh, Galwegians and not having good competitive games does uh, dull your senses and uh, to my knowledge St Mary's have uh, been challenged there they've had a couple of tough games there and uh, it seemed to be the sharp of the two outfits Ball went backwards, so we can continue on. <laughs> and that must be the handiest throw you're ever going to get. Complete fumble there by the backs. Ridiculous kick, clearance kick there. Allowing Daniel Hawkshaw there to um, get a cosy try there in the corner.
And with a successful conversion, which will be very difficult from this angle, we'll put the game there 26-20. Uh, but uh, that would be a hard task now. Very difficult angle. Outstanding conversion there, unreal conversion. That brings the score there. To try by Daniel Hawkshaw, converted by Stephen Mannion. St Mary's 26, Buccaneers 20. And Bucks there coming back into the game there, which are six points between the teams. I think there was a mistake there by uh, Bucks player. They must have touched the ball. Ah, oh, 50-22. Absolutely perfect 50-22 there. Given possession there. And a throw in there by uh, St. Mary's. And that certainly looked as it was knocked on, but referee ain't calling it. And it looks as if definitely uh, the fans here, that was a high tackle. Samuri's having a penalty advantage here. Referee not calling it, and look, the ball is held up. However, referee is going back to the earlier penalty. So again, on this occasion, Buccaneers have been warned there about the high tackles. And it looks like the referee is down. Referee there, I think he's hurt his ankle. He's not comfortable. And I think we might have to change referees. <laughs> From the mic that's on the ref, it looks like he's after rolling over his ankle and he ain't going to be continuing. So we're at 25. I think it's 25 minutes into the second half. So we're kind of halfway into the second half and it looks like we could have a particularly uh, long delay. Now fortunately we do have two uh, touch judges which I'm assuming one can take over the duties. But uh, this is the first time I've seen a referee twist his ankle. I've seen several there pull muscles but never one with an ankle. And I think we've got a uh, St. Mary's physio there st helping him out. But from the mic that's on him, he's in a lot of distress, a lot of pain, and he will not be continuing.
and with that the uh, mics are coming off so I think uh, our mic our referee's mic is now dead With that there, the referee has to hop off. So one of the touch judges there is going to officiate for the referee, I think, because they've just given uh, the flag there to uh, I think one of uh, St. Mary's um, background personnel. <laughs> so I came to you getting agreement there from both uh, teams there who's going to act as touch judge. Fortunately, we haven't had a long break there. Sometimes there, when you lose a referee, it can take uh, quite a while to get a replacement. Unfortunately, he doesn't look too badly injured. Just uh, rolled over in his ankle. And game can continue. So with that, play continues with a new referee. And there can be no doubt about that there. Buccaneers weren't able to contain them all. Players all over the place. A fairly handy try there by St. Mary's. So just as when we thought there, Buccaneers are coming back into the game. St. Mary's have gone back into lead with a comfortable margin. That misconversion there. 70 minutes to try for St. Mary's. St. Mary's 31, Buccaneers 20. And with that try there, it gives St. Mary's there an um, 11 point advantage. Unfortunately, that was kicked out in the full. And that gives possession there to uh, St. Mary's on the Buccaneers 10 meter line. Thank <laughs> you. 
Great turnover ball there with Bucks. I think that was Carl Walsh there that got the turn over there in the rock. See that happening? Buccaneers there will not be happy with that. That was very, very soft. Once again, an outstanding conversion there by St. Mary's. 73 minutes to try by Connor Dean. Conversion from... Nicodara, St. Mary's 38, Buccaneers 20. <laughs> Once again, a Carl Walsh there, pushing the ball there, and giving possession back. Because St. Mary's there, we're on a nice break.
Looks like the referee there going back to a penalty for uh, an offside by St. Mary's. Hence, I think that's why the, uh, the chip kick was. Buccaneers there kicking the touch. And let's hope there the line out mall goes a little bit better this time. Out of patience in this occasion, not panicking. Would be nice there if Buccaneers can get score a try there from play. And that <laughs> and it looks there as if um, putting on a replay of what exactly happened there. But it looks like Buccaneers were certain sure the ball was touched down on the line. Regardless, we go back to a scrum for a knock-on. So the Buccaneers thought that was a short uh, try. Referee determines it was a knock-on. Yeah, there's kind of mystery here. It looks as if um, Buccaneers knocked the ball on, but if they did, it would have been uh, St. Mary's put in. So a bit of mystery here as to how Buccaneers get a throw in when we were, had possession and we were claiming we scored a try. So no doubt we'll find out later after the <laughs> whistle is gone. And this time it's St. Mary's under pressure in the scrum. Been penalised there for bringing down the scrum and Buccaneers go back for a second scrum. So according to the clock there, uh, 40 minutes are up in the second half, but we'll have to add on at least another five minutes there for a uh, uh, referee injury.
And again, Bucks aren't going to make it through with one off runners. And unexpectedly. It's St. Mary's aren't protecting the rock. The ball there in a very good possession. Unfortunately, conversion is missed. Bringing box up to 25. St. Mary's 38. One minutes to try for Buccaneers, scored by number one James Kelly. St. Mary's 38, Buccaneers 25. I So with minutes left in the game, um, St. Mary's are going to go for the post, just inside the Buccaneers 10 meter line. Carefully judged there in distance and angle. that there uh, I think that's a full time whistle well, the final score ladies and gentlemen St Mary's 41 Buccaneers 25 and once again just to remind you the under 12 start their Metro League campaign away to Cool Line tomorrow your support will be greatly appreciated but at the end of the season they're off to be a race so keep them in mind the future of the club the under 12 once again, thank you all for coming to Templeton Road. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good afternoon. And with those messages there by uh, St Mary's um, College, uh, wish you all goodbye, good luck, and God bless. And um, and again, as I said earlier on, there if you come, you would like to advertise with Buccaneers there while our games are being streamed. Just contact any member of staff. Uh, we're on the uh, telephone book.